Bay, California in 1997. Survivors of Heaven's Gate provide true stories which read like sci-fi novels. A cult leader's daughter tells of her mother's search for UFOs. A mother of a suicide victim describes her son's alien transformation. Members of another group, the Unarius Academy, just down the road from Rancho Santa Fe, drive to a secret UFO landing site. How can we interpret this mania to seek contact with an alien race? that the big surprise could come that spacecrafts could come in by the thousands maybe come in ships in March 1997 Marshall Applewhite the leader of Heaven's Gate told his followers there was a UFO in the tail of the Hale-Bopp Comet which orbits the Earth once every 2,000 years he convinced them that this was their signal to board the flying saucer which would take them into eternity. In order to catch this ride, the 39 cult members committed suicide by a combination of phenobarbital, alcohol, and suffocation. For reasons that still remain unanswered, they wore Nike running shoes, sported buzz haircuts, and carried five dollars of quarters in their pockets. This tragedy was the culmination of 22 years of behavior modification under Marshall Applewhite's spell. What once started out as a grassroots Christian sect evolved into a dark millennial cult with beliefs in aliens and Armageddon. So when they presented the picture of being able to literally leave uh, in a craft, so to speak, which they were saying was similar to what Jesus did, he actually left in a physical body when they overlaid that with modern day technological information like that cloud of light was a ufo it all lined up for me early on marshall applewhite and his co-leader bonnie nettles had convinced themselves and their followers that they were god's emissaries here to lead humanity out of a corrupt world applewhite said he and nettles had come from outer space taking on human bodies as camouflage. They offered salvation to members who could overcome their attachment to human desires such as sex, money, and drugs. Where did this desperate and bizarre mixture of sci-fi and millennial madness begin? Before Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Lou Nettles became so-called alien agents, they were living separate lives in quiet desperation. Their twisted partnership began some 25 years earlier in Houston. Bonnie's daughter, Terry Nettles, recalls when she was 14 years old, she and her mother would stand in their backyard, searching the skies for UFOs, hoping they would be transported. It would be really neat if one would come and pick us up and take us away. Because neither one of us really felt like we were part of this world, that we were always on the outside looking in. And we used to dream about that a lot. We wanted something different. 